All right, so we're, this is the chaos uh, common working group meeting for October 31st. I believe I said I would take minutes. You your, did. Right, okay. I'm just making sure I'm in my role. Got it. So there's the document. All right. Um, okay, so the first, I thought I'd pull up, I have the notes here. Um, so the first was the couple action items from last week. So, um, Sean, you were going to provide right. the API endpoints. And I think the, like, not just for common, but for all of them, I'm trying to really get people when we talk about tools that are used, tools providing the metric. Mm -hmm to not just say, hey, here's a link to like Grimoire Lab or here's a link to Augur, but being a little bit more specific in terms of, yep. in okay. terms of like where it's actually provided. So, so I'll give you a repo link. We, every one of our endpoints has both a repo and a repo group summary level. So you can just assume that's implicit. <clears throat> so that's c code changes. So, and that includes the timestamps with time zone for each um, commit. Okay. Which is what was displayed in the discussion last time. Okay. So the way the way that. Yep. The way that I look at what was displayed there is that's just what we saw was just decoration on code changes. Yep. It wasn't like anything that we had. So this is time as related to code changes, but obviously right. time could be related to a variety of different things. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, time, time is a thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it's a, what do you call it, a filter, I think is the word that evolution shows. Yeah, using. so yeah, so these would be, these would be filters. So this is, this is an example. Yeah, it's okay. an example. Yep. So these are the kind of, things I think, as you're um, like on some of the metrics that we're going to release, like for version two, the ones that were released the first time, yep. I, might, I might be pinging you on a few of those that would be providing kind of exactly this link that you just provided me. Yeah. And we're, we're going back through all of our, we're, I mean, we're basically at the point where we're generating a ton of new endpoints right now. So yeah. An explosion in Augur endpoints over the next six weeks leading up to the release of metrics. So, I, yeah, I think you guys can. That's going to co evolve with the metrics that we define from what we have. So, yeah, and if there's a, if there's a concrete example from Augur, that's what I want to put in as opposed right. to just like, sure, you could do it in Augur, but we right. don't have it done yet. Right. Fair so. enough. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's good. Thanks. Um, uh, okay. So, I had. I was supposed to put together a pull request. You're you're all you're both going to yell at me, but I'm um, I put together a pull request. <laughs> I put together a pull request. You're the German. I'm fine. Yeah. So well, I did it. I mean, I took I I'm but I but I combined it with my restructuring of the repository. So there's one giant pull request. Well, that's just good leverage of your time. Well, and it's it's actually not a terribly complex pull request. It took a while. But when you look at it, it's not crazy weird. So we'll talk about that here in a little bit. And I've been merging other pull requests like a lot the last month. So this well, don't don't this merge this one quite yet. So because there, there might be a request to make it into two. <clears throat> requests. One is the repo redesign, and then a second pull request is the metric itself. But that seems like it would be unnecessary. But. We'll see. <laughs> so we'll talk about that in a second. All right. Um, John is not here, so we'll put that put that back. Um, so Grimoire Lab. So Sean, there was an action item for you that you were going to create an issue and a document with respect to the Grimoire Lab Elk Git metrics. So the idea was here, here's the link. And I went through and pulled out some that I thought were applicable. Okay. But from this link, 
Um, are there things that Grimoire Lab has kind of identified in the schema that would be candidates for common metrics? Okay. Um, so for example, in this schema list, they, they list, you know, date and time, and we've already identified those as common metrics. Yeah. So are I mean, there anything else in this list? And the ones that I had identified? So this is just basically the JSON dump file from the commit that Grimoire Lab generates, right? Here, am I right about that? Sorry, can you ask that again? Is this, um, this looks like the dump of a git commit log. That's probably uh, in JSON. The schema? Yeah. There's yeah. a few other things, I think. The schema v, uh, CSV is manually maintained because we have. Um, oh, right. So the schema is the meta level. I'm just thinking, I'm sorry, I want your concrete data. So, in terms of the source of the concrete data behind this, I think it's the commit log. For Git, yes. I mean, for this, I guess this schema. Yes, right. Yeah, to get that CSP. Yep. So, yep. Um, what is the question, Matt? So the question is on this list of fifty-two rows mm -hmm. that they have here. Are there, when you read through this list, are there things that um, kind of stand out as potential uh, candidates for common metrics? And so, for example, date and time obviously shows up. A, a lot in this this list, mm -hmm. and, and so this is pretty common. Like we do the same yeah. thing by breaking out author and committer dates. Um, yep. So date and time—that's something that we've taken care of in common, right? We have, yeah. Well, I mean, so so common common's interest in date and gear. I mean, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but common's interest in date is using it to understand when people are committing and in what time zone they are. So date is date is sort of a, a filter that's spread across almost every metric. That's why it's common. Yes. Sorry. Right. Okay. So it's, I see. I can see. But it's yep. at, it's at the I guess my question is and I'm I'm apolog I apologize if I'm missing your previous conversation somewhere, but date is a component inside of basically every metric, but date itself is not a metric. It's a it's a a field inside of the metric. Well, it's just we have a date time metric. Which <clears> is <throat> just it's a common. It's a it'd be a common filter that you would apply. I mean, it's right. something that you do have to pull, kind of like per yeah. example. But I mean, so if you say there's a date time metric, what is the metric for date? Well, time? one of the reasons we started the common metrics working group is because we had metrics that didn't really quite fit yeah. with all the other working groups. Agreed. So we have some date related metrics, like when are people contributing, that is not clearly evolution, not clearly any other metric, so, or another working group. So that's why it's in common. So I, I agree, but what is the, I guess maybe I'm missing something. Is there a metric? So I'm distinguishing between a metric and a field and a metric. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Let's. So I'm, I'm, look, we're going find the chaos. Maybe I'm, I'm here. Totally here's the here's the document that is the date time metric. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Okay. We looked at this. I guess I didn't. So when we talked about this last week, I didn't realize it was called date time metric, but. We've been I talking think, about it for. Oh uh, yeah. So I so what's always resonated with me about this is that it's the time zone that's really important. That that it's not actually a date time metric. It's a it's a time zone identification metric like um, activity dates and times. I guess. Jason. Okay. I mean, this could be a metric, sure. Um, but I think that, I, I guess I would say like, we have aggregations listed by UTC time and by local time. Um, 
which is true. Okay. It's just different ways that you could think about time. Yeah. This is a really sophisticated filter more than I, uh, I guess it's semantics, so I won't argue about it. I'm, I mean, not trying, I'm not trying to be argumentative. Yeah, I mean, if you want to get rid of this metric, we can. We I don't, can I don't, think yeah. I, mean, I think if the community agrees it's a metric, we can make it a metric, I think. But you don't way. seem to agree with this. So I mean, like, well, what are you proposing? And, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm not disagreeing with it because I have any particular problem with it. I'm just reflecting on the conversations that, and this is maybe where being being involved in discussing things in evolution with Jesus for so long, I maybe am too colored by prior thinking about the past. But we distinguished, and maybe Gary, you can speak to what Jesus is thinking it might be here, but we distinguished between filters and metrics. And time was a filter. So what's interesting here, though, is that this is an important metric when you talk about the difference between UTC time and local time. So we're saying that the UTC time aggregations and the local time aggregations are filters in this case. But I actually think that those are essential data components in the metric itself. In other words, the, it, they're not really filters here. They're, they're essential pieces of the metric because what so could I ask you to modify this metric yeah. accordingly? I mean I <coughs> yeah yeah I feel I'm like sorry. we're stepping backwards. Right? I'm sorry and that's but for not really rocking what this was called before. Um because we've talked about this for a while. Yeah yeah and I think and I guess the description is accurate. Um but it, the name are you proposing, I also hear you proposing that common should be called like common filters? No. Not no, common no. metrics? No, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I think when I look at what this metric is, I think. The name is probably, okay. I'm processing this a little bit more. The name, I think just hearing the name activity dates and times through me a little bit, but reading it again. This is, this is about localization. The principal questions that this asks in a full question metric framework, the question that this answers is, what, time, what is the local time when a contributor is doing their work? That's, that's the common metrics group's interest in this. So that's, that's the question. And I don't know. So do, we change, do you want to change the question? Yeah, because I think it's it's okay. more about what are the what what are the local dates and timestamps of when the contributor activities occur. Can there be more than one question? No. Okay. So implicit in that question though is it's being used, as I understand from previous discussions, to estimate or guess at to to for people to make guesses about where in the on the planet someone's doing their work like that that is the underlying reason that this metric came about in the common group and gear you can color that in if, if you want but from the discussions i've been in with common that is the thing that people are trying to understand through this data i have nothing to add there Okay. Do you, I mean, is that consistent with other conversations you've had or, or is it not something you've heard before? No, it matches. Okay. What I'm, what I'm doing right now is the, I'm reviewing Matt's <clears throat> um, pull request and I'm fixing a few things, but then I think we're ready to merge it. So I would not open this metric up for discussion right now. That's my opinion. Okay, so the metrics implemented this way. I think that's that's fine. Um, I'm sorry for the diversion. No, I'm just trying to get at what you're trying. I mean, it, it, so, it sounds like you're asking for some fundamental changes in I the way think, the common I functions. I don't think so. I think okay. there is an assumption. So the origins of why this metric is, exists is it, it is fundamentally trying to understand where on earth people are making their contributions. There's an understanding that people work funny hours and their local times, their local times may not align 
clearly. It's also meant to understand, I think there's also dates in here. Yeah, so. so to see if there's, it's not just time zones. So you're right. So the, the distinguished, the, the presence of time zone data is I think regarded as a more, uh, you know, for people who aren't doing things on UTC on their servers, which I do sometimes, but, but for people who are actually making local commits in the time zone that they live in, because computers tend to sync that automatically. It's regarded, I think, by this group as a more robust indicator of where on the planet people are making their contributions from. And that's, that's the underlying reason that this metric exists. And I think that's been in nearly every discussion about it, but it's not reflected in the metric. And I don't think it has to be. I just don't want to lose that. That I, I don't think it has to be right now, to Eric's point. We can merge this as it is. But I think so this metric actually came from where my employees. Right, exactly. I mean, that was it. Exactly. That's and, it. exactly. and Sean is right, it's not in the metric right now. But that was, we decided, so as part of this conversation, we decided that from an organizational perspective, that was too hard to do. That it was just, there were just limitations on trying to figure out where employees are, when my employees are contributing, just right. because of weird servers and kind of how things function on the internet. So uh, this is, this is, this data will be used to probabilistically estimate where people are. And there's going to be a recognition that it's not perfect, but that's and, that's yeah, the underlying like, reason that people want this. Yep. And that's and it's just not reflected, and that's probably fine because all of the people who are going to lead the charge of building it understand that. However, it might be helpful for consumers of chaos metrics to to know that that context exists. And maybe maybe that's something that can be added to the description after this pull request is merged. Okay, so can I give you that action item? Will you do that? I will. Okay. Let me get my to-do list out here. Okay, then I will squash and merge the pull request. <coughs> well, the, whole, the pull request Why also contains, the pull request also contains a repo update, right? Yep, I reviewed all that. Okay, what do you think? What's the reason for squashing it? It's good. Okay. Yeah, if there's, and I think if you if you do that merge, if there's any little details that I miss, you can fix them, fix them at this point. Forward. My, my question was, um, Georg, I'm just curious why we're squashing the commit. Oh, because there are so many small, tiny commits in this one. Okay. And if you squash it, then you get one clean commit for everything. It looks like Matt used the GitHub interface to create I see. Okay. All of those, and so. I'm a granular. Someone who I does see. it locally, there's no way to yeah. combine it in get the GitHub interface okay. besides squashing at merge. Okay. Time. I'm a I'm a granular person. I never squash, but I I get it. That's cool. I just wanted to understand. Thanks. Yeah, but update read me. 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 Yeah. You yeah. know that's just. It's, kind of an, it's an annoying series of, of. Uh, commits and it does it. Yeah. Okay. That's, I get it. It's cool. I just, I didn't, I have like a philosophy of not squashing, but I get why you would squash this. So go for it. Okay. Okay. So Sean, now that that metric is in there, if you want to propose changes, let's just exactly. do it. On, do yep, it there. That's I'll exactly like, Let's move off of the. Yep. Sorry. I'm really sorry about that diversion. I, I think it adds value ultimately, but it was a long conversation that didn't need to happen. So sorry. Yeah, and so what the the that took us away from kind of the original question, which really was sorry. on that list <clears throat> was from Grimoire Lab that list of fifty two rows. Yeah, I mean so those are the Git timestamps. That's I mean that's what's in a Git log. Like it's almost defined by Git. Yep. So in there, there are things like date time, which we just merged uh, one of the, so are there other things in this list that would be considered perhaps common filters or common metrics that could be applied with pull requests, issues, whatever it might be. And the clearly committer name. Yep. So author, author, I think is one author name. You know, I, I think, um, I guess you're storing author email as a privacy practice, Georg. 
author, you're storing author domain instead of email as a, as an, a to address privacy considerations? Um, I'm not sure what because author domain I think is just the, um, the ending on the email. Right, but there's not a full, so we use the full email to resolve identities across GitHub, GitLab, uh, Bitbucket, and uh, the Git repositories. So the email is kind of a key that we use to resolve common human beings across different platforms. Yeah. And um, I can certainly understand why one would not store that given that Bitturgy is headquartered in Europe. However, I, you know, Git, Git as a general rule does have a, a, a written documented um, exception to the GDPR. So I, I might. No, like, I think, I think it's just a matter that the identity itself is <clears throat> managed in sorting hat. So that's I a see. different. I see. Okay. So that, yeah. Can I, can I rein this in just a little bit? Yeah. So just, I mean, like, Matt's going to be like, Sean, you can't, can't come to these calls anymore. <laughs> I just, what I'm trying to do is just like the highest <laughs> level things in this list. And I will give you my example. I'll give you what I wrote down. So author is one of them. Author. Yes. Yeah. You, you might, that's a, a, a author, metric, author, author, whatever. We'll just call it yeah. author for the time being. Well, author and committer are two different people. Okay. Yes. Okay. So the other, the other thing that I had, the other things that I had on here was kind of the construction of the project. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that is in these rows is lines, files, repository, branch, and project, which I think is organization in here. Uh -huh. So, cause there could be a pull request that looks, you know, that, could be filtered by files. It could be filtered by lines. There could be an issue that is particular to a branch. I, th I think the commit hash is another one. I agree with all of those. I would add commit hash or hash as well, because that's used to identify a specific commit, which is very useful for a lot of things. So Georg, did you see any others on there? So. Or your thoughts on what I had said too? And what Sean mentioned, um, so some of those you, you said are structural metrics. Structurally, or just something because in the sense that of files to me, for example, right or lines added. That's um, a nice to have metric, but how does that reveal structure? Which which um, one? I was. Yep. So I was just thinking kind of building up to the growth of the project so that lines can, lines are the lowest, most granular level thing that can be modified. I think the granularity on this is, is files though. Well, there's That's just the number. It's not the actual file. Right. It's a number of files. Yeah. So then there are, Files. There are files within the repository. The repository has branches. That I'm just. I mean, maybe they don't work. But when I look at what we had talked about last <coughs> time we had this call about the focus areas, mm -hmm. they were who. So the first, the new focus area is who, which is people and organizations. Typically, is I think the way we were talking about them. Um, what, so what the contribution is, that was what, what was. So what is what the, so this doesn't include the, what it includes the number of files, but not the files. No, it doesn't. This is not about what yet. When, which is the square there, what we had talked about who, what, when, and then where, so where the. I think it's where the activity is occurring. So if I look, if you scroll down, oh no, I guess where is a little bit different. So it'd be, this would be a what, let me pull this up. 
I'm going to put it in, you see the bottom of the minutes there? See, I did the who, what, when, where. Mm -hmm. You see those bullet points? I do. So this is what came up last week. So maybe it is uh, what metric, what are they doing changing this number of files, changing this number of lines? Um, so maybe files, repo, lines, maybe these don't fit as common things at all. So I think I think counting, well, I think they do. I think counting the files is a, a meta statistic that gives you an idea of the scope without bothering you with an enumeration of every file in a commit. I think there are, I guess, where would the what of what are the files in a commit exist? So my thought was, let's say you issue a pull request, right? And we're we're looking at say time to merge on a pull request. Right. Would it be also useful to know? So time is obviously a filter there. Also the number of lines that are being changed. You know, right. Request. Does is that in the CSV? Did I miss that? No, no. Again, I'm just talking about these common metrics. So would I see? Would would lines be an, an issue? Like so, would, it, would an issue, would it be interesting to know that an issue is pointed at a particular branch? Issues would generally not be pointed at a branch. That I have an issue with what's going on in the dev branch. Oh, I mean, I, I've never opened an issue like that, but I suppose you could. It's possible, but I don't think it's a common enough use case. No, I think it's, it's, so when it comes to the question of lines, I think, I think just having lines in a commit is hard to understand unless you know, like knowing the number of files, if you're just listing the number of files, then that is, I think, as far as you can go for usefully describing the scope of a commit. I think if you go to lines, you really need to understand which, how many lines are changed in which files, like I think squashing the there are now two di two layers of abstraction away from uh the scope of a commit so for example the number of lines in a javascript file is going to be uh it's going to be larger in general than the number of lines in a python file or a c file for a similar scope of change and if you abstract away the number of lines from the specific file I think you're taking away information that's useful that renders that line count not valuable. Okay. And so Grimoire Lab has a different uh, index, the areas of code CSP and the schema doc uh, folder, mm -hmm. where it does store specific file name, file path, and what changes have been done to those files. So it's just in a different index because it separates out from the commit. And then it creates for each commit one entry, I think in the areas of code index. So I just want to say maybe to your point, Sean, we, we shouldn't be limited for looking at the commit level, the git CSV, but also of the information we pull in addition to that. Well, the Git, the Git log does include the, the files changed and you can derive the number Correct. and you can count the number of lines in each file from the Git log. So the, like the Git definition that you have there for elk is squashing information that's in the Git log out of the Git log. And, ex and it sounds like you've just addressed that in a separate file, which is called what again? The areas of code. I put it in the okay. chat. So, I mean, this is for Grimoire Lab design, so I mean, y'all can do whatever you think is best. I think- My point is simply to say that information, since we are looking at the Grimoire Lab schema, is the information is there just 
in the different file, in the different index. Yeah. So <clears throat> it's going to be useful for people consuming Grimoire Lab to know that areas of code is derived from the Git log. That's, that's my so, thought. I, I, coming back to common metrics. So, so yes. like if we think about if we think about date and time. Yeah. Date and time is something that is applicable across a number of metrics in a variety of different working groups. It's important for risk. It's important for evolution. It's important for value. That's a true story. I agree. Okay. So are there any are there any of these metrics when you look at this list? Are there any? Is there anything else that like understanding? lines or repository or organization, are there any of those that could be useful supplementary, supplementary metrics or filters for evolution and for risk and for, that's what Common's trying to do. Yeah, I mean, I think. So like the CII badge in risk that's not really a common metric because it's highly localized to risk and yeah. sure it could have some play in in other areas if you abstract it out but are there any other metrics in this list like date time i mean i think um files and lines of code are i mean they're all not the working in, they're not they're not in this list but they're useful to all the working groups and so i don't know that we have to drive the discussion from these CSV files, but I, I think they're useful for identifying um, the, the points that could be common. So I would say the file, a list of files, not just the count of the number of files, and then the lines of code in a file. Which the, the two yeah. that kind of jump out. Yeah, and those have a hierarchical relationship. So I think it's helpful to represent the hierarchy which we do in the auger schema. So the way that I see this is, I put it down below is we have lines, add a change removed and files edited as metrics, as numbers. And mm -hmm. then we have names of changed files, directory of changed files and file type changed and repo name. And those are all filters that can help us to I don't know, se segment the data. So with these but, filters in the common, on these common metrics? So, I, I mean, I think like files changed and lines of code changed are very similar, which I, I think Matt's point, they're, they're conceptually identical to the time zone or the, the activity date and time question. These would be the, these are specifics of the what that people I think will be interested in. So, Georg, did you hear that question too? Uh, so, what what I'm hearing Sean say is, if we have the names of all the files changed, then we can calculate the number of files. Well, and you can enumerate the number of files, and then you can show the lines of code changed, and the lines added and removed on yeah. each file, which I think is really. I mean, people kind of expect that from a Git log analysis. So. But the name of the file is a filter that you can apply to look at that level, or you can omit the filter to get the aggregate. Sure. And then the I mean, number of files edited is the actual. Right. But I would just say that just lines of code is meaningless unless you know the file that the lines of code comes from. So lines of code at a commit level is not particularly helpful in most, right. in, unless there's only one file being edited. So, so we agree <coughs> that number of lines changed, added, removed, but not is a metric, but we need the filter by file name for it to be meaningful. Names of changed files. Yeah, and, and I, I think it's, yes, yes. But the file name includes the path as well, which it looks like you've separated. Um, well, so yeah, we, we can, because in many cases, there's the same file name in multiple directories in a project. Like README is a good example. 
Yeah, but sometimes um, you can also just look at the file path as a way to look at modules within or different areas within the project. So yes. That's why yes, you can look at like path subdirectories and filter by that as well. Exactly. Okay, so what I'm hearing with respect to the what focus area from the two of you is that those two number of lines and number of files, basically, however they're titled, would be the two metrics. Yep. There are two metrics. I think we named a few others as well previously, but I think you captured those. Would it be useful to just combine them the way that date time was combined? You know, that you would just have a metric that's called files and or lines and files files and lines i think so yeah yeah that sounds like a really useful grouping like activity dating time activity files and lines of code <coughs> yeah okay okay Um, why don't you, I'm going to, um, give myself this. To start this, okay? Based on what Georg has, what we've talked about and what Georg has chatted down. Mm -hmm. And then I'll bring that forward in two weeks. Yep. That was good. Okay. That was good. Um, good. Um, well, we have, um, and then we have the organization metric for the who metric, right? Um, yeah, actually, if you look at the repo now, it is the organizational diversity is what's currently in there. Yeah. And so, I mean, the other, the other kind of seems like obvious metric to me would be author and maybe committer. Mm -hmm. Author and committer, I think are important. Yes. Those are the two who's. Yeah, they, they, we just don't have them specified yet. Yeah, um, yeah, I think we say specify them. I would combine them as okay. contributor because that way we generalize it across other collaboration platforms as well. And then a contributor can be an author on a commit. A yeah, and that can be taken care of in the dis and, the description. Yeah, it can be a poster or tweeter. I don't know if that's a thing. What? Oh, tweeter? Okay. Someone on Twitter who tweets. Yeah, yeah. So it's a tweeter. So does anybody on this call want to take a shot at just using our new metrics template to describe it? To describe the, the auth committer and yeah. author. I mean, I can do that. We already have that kind of defined another metric. Yeah, and this certainly doesn't have to be done. It's mostly just like setting it up with the new template. And yeah. I can take that to do. Just kind of writing a few sentences on the description and the objectives. Yep. Do we want to make committer and author part of the same metric? I think we do. That's what, yeah, Gary had suggested calling it contributor. Yeah, I, I think that's that's what we call it in other working groups, so that's consistent. So here we would have contributor. <clears throat> okay. And then I think as filters, we can employ the demographic information. Like what? Like a like whether oh. work well with yeah. back into organization. Anything that we can get almost. 
Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So at this point, we are. This is good. I think honestly, just moving forward on these two metrics would be a great, great thing. Okay. Every week. Um, so we'd have two moving forward. One is lines and files, and then the other is contributor. I'm going to put lines and files. That's a what metric? Is that right? That's a what? Metric. Yeah, that's a lines and files. Files and lines, I might call it. And I can take that one too. No, I got it. Okay. I'll start that one. Again, I mean, this is a kind of getting these things into a Word document, just starting these things out, it might take like 10 minutes. It's not meant to take a terribly long time. All right. Um, anything else? No. It was no, I think that's good. Common meeting. We got some things merged in and yeah, we're all commoned up. We're good to go. Okay. Um, okay. We have a couple action items. Georg, you're leaving without any action items. Is that okay? I'm perfectly happy with that. <laughs> I imagine you are. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thanks, Matt. Bye. Yeah. Yeah.